joining this morning. Good morning, Shelly, or I think it might be Shell. I don't know. Hey, Shell, that's what we're going to call you today. I hate when I mess up people's Instagram names. All right, so let's jump into this this morning. I hope everyone is feeling as great as I am this morning. Thank you all again so much for joining us and for tuning in for another Mornings with God series. I'm really, really excited about today's topic as I shared with you all um I'm sorry, as I shared with you all, uh, maybe two weeks ago that I was going to be spending the next couple of weeks just kind of sharing a little bit of the behind the scenes for my um, home buying process and just how I took some lessons from that and was able to relate it to um, my business process, right? The process of being a business owner because it's a forever journey. There is no um, point of arrival. You may arrive at a particular goal that you wanted to achieve, but there is really no point of arrival or no point of, you know what, I finally made it. If you are a true business owner who desires to grow and to consistently be going to the next level. So I'm excited about today because we're continuing to unpack the idea of God's promises concerning our professional lives. So um, before we jump in again, just please take this opportunity to invite someone. I'm going to do it really quick on Instagram. So if you are um, on Instagram, you can use the little arrow that should be somewhere on your screen um, to invite some people to join you. So I just invited maybe about 20 people there. Um, good morning. Um, and then on Facebook, you can do it by hitting the little person icon that should have a plus sign next to it. Um, I know that you can also do something called a watch party where it shares to everyone who's on your timeline. So again, I just invited about 20 people um, from Facebook. So as you all hop on this morning, please say hello. Let me know where you're tuning in from. I know that we have some people from Philly. I know that we have some people from Georgia. Um, from Atlanta specifically. Um, I know that we have some people from Kentucky um, and just from all over the country. So again, good morning to everyone and thank you all for tuning in. Let's go ahead and get engaged. If you are on Instagram, let's hit that heart button, begin to send up the love begin to send up the love um, to me this morning and to God this morning. I love, love, love the heart button on Instagram and on Facebook. You can start to hit that like button and the love button on Facebook. Thank you all for all of you who are tuning in as you're getting ready this morning. Um, it is always my goal to never keep you too long, but we always have to go with what the Holy Spirit says that we are going to do. Um, so prayerfully, I can get you all off of here in enough time uh, to make sure that you're on time to work this morning morning. Um, and then last but not least, for those of you who are joining and you may not know who I am, my name is Tiffany Gillespie. I am a small business consultant based out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. I specialize in helping Christian leaders to turn their ideas to reality and turn their struggling brands into thriving businesses thriving six-figure businesses. Uh, and we do that through the use of strategy systems and strategic events. The Mornings with God series is a weekly series that we do come hella high water every Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. or somewhere around that time. I am on here with you all in the morning praying for your businesses, praying for your careers, and just studying how it is that God's word applies to what it is that we do professionally. So thank you to all of our first timers who are on here watching. Thank you to to those of you who continue to join me week after week, I promise that it is you who keeps me going because I could sure take that extra hour of sleep on Tuesday mornings and just sleep in. Um, for those of you who may be new to tuning into the series, we work from this little book right here. Uh, it's called Mornings with God, 60 Seconds to Jumpstart Your Morning with God. It's filled with 365 days of scriptures, affirmations, and prayers. Um, so it literally takes you a minute or two to just carve out some time in the morning with God. So this is the book that we work from most weeks for this series. So if you want to keep up with what we're talking about, then you can 
can go to tiffanygillespie.com and grab this book. Uh, this morning, we are focused on day 32, which is down here at the bottom. You guys see my little sticky note there. Um, so we're going to be focused on day 32. So if you have your book... Um, you can go ahead and get that in front of you and flip to day 32 as I open us up in prayer. Lord, before we come to you asking you for anything, we first just want to thank you for everything. God, we want to thank you for waking us up this morning and allowing us to see another day. God, we ask that you would just clear our hearts and minds, Father God, that you would open up each individual person's heart, mind, and spirit to receive what it is that you want to deposit in them this morning. Father God, I pray that you would move by the power of your Holy Spirit and that you would do what only you can do. God, I pray that you would reveal to each person the specific instructions that you need them to follow in order to see the manifestation of the promises that you have for them. God, I pray that you would remind them through this broadcast that you have great plans for them, that you have promises for them, that you want to prosper them, to give them a future, and that it is never your intention to harm them or to allow bad things to happen to them. But because you are a great God, you cause all things, including the not so good things to work together for the good of those who love you and those who have been called according to your purpose. And God, I know that the people who have pressed their way to be on this broadcast with us this early on a Tuesday morning are certainly called to a greater purpose because they understand that purpose requires a lot of sacrifice and we know that getting up early every Tuesday is indeed a sacrifice. So God, I pray that you would reward them richly and that again, you would open up their heart, mind, and spirit. Remove all distractions from this time. Use me as your vessel this morning, Lord, to only speak those things that you would have me to say so that your name be glorified. We pray these in all things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. All right. So good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning to my brother Royce. Um, thank you for joining. Uh, good morning to my girlfriend, Ashley. Good college friend there. Um, and to all of my family, friends and supporters who are joining us on Instagram and on Facebook this morning. So again, if you're just now joining us, we are coming from day 32 of the Mornings with God book. If you don't have it, you can get it on tiffanygillespie.com. Uh, if you order it this morning, it will be shipped to you today. Um, I'm uh, doing a mailing later today. So if you order this morning, it will be shipped to you today. So on day 32, our uh, devotional for today says, every instruction that God gives is right. He makes no mistakes and he is committed to his promises to his children. I'll read that again. Every instruction that God gives is right. He makes no promise. Uh, I'm sorry. He makes no mistakes and he is committed to his promises to his children. So I really, when I read this, I was just like, oh, I am so excited about today. And it's so interesting because I did, when I wrote this book two years ago, of course, I didn't realize that two years later that so many things would line up so perfectly with God's plan for my life that we would be in a series where we're talking about God's promises and that the devotions would actually line up with that. I didn't know that the devotions that were written two years ago would line up with the series that God wanted me to focus on in January 2019. But that's how perfect and how intentional God is, is that he knows what's coming down the pipeline and he knows how everything is going to come into alignment and how everything is going to sync up for you in your life. So when I read this this morning, I was like, God, you are just so intentional. You are just so great and magnificent that you would have our devotions devotional for today be uh, on the topic of your promises and how it is that you never fail. But what I really want to focus on this morning is our topic of the instruction that comes before the promise that a lot of times as children of God, we remember the promises or we get hyped up and emotional about the promises that we have this emotional response to the promises that God made us. But for some reason, our ears tend to not be as in tune to the instruction that comes before the promise. So I'll give you an example. We kind of talked about this on last week's broadcast that when I knew that God was calling me to be a homeowner, that happened almost four years ago when God 
God gave me the, the idea and the vision. And again, I don't come from a long line of homeowners. Like, yes, there are homeowners in my family. My parents are homeowners. Uh, my grandparents, they were homeowners. So I do have homeowners, my godparents, you know, in my family. But it's not like I come from a long line of them, right? That, that everybody that's connected to me, friends, family, and otherwise, are homeowners. So I knew that when this desire became mine that it had to be something that God was calling me to and that it was going to be something that was bigger than me four years ago. So when I knew that the desire was there and that God had placed this promise over my life, he also placed an instruction. There was a long list of instructions and some things that I had to do before I could see the manifestation of the promise, right? So I had to make the sacrifice to move from the one bedroom apartment that I was living in to um, uh, actually a bigger home, which is funny how that works, right? When you follow God's instruction, how the increase happens. So I actually moved from a one bedroom apartment to a four bedroom, three story house. But because I took on a roommate, it cost me less to live in the bigger place than it did in the smaller place. Somebody's going to catch that later. That's what happens when you follow God's instruction is that what seems like a step back. What seems like something that is taking you in the opposite direction is actually setting you up to receive more. So um, I, I made that sacrifice, took on a roommate. Uh, it was a wonderful situation. We lived together very, very well. Um, and there, you know, no complaints, no, no issues. We paid our bills on time. We got along well. Like it was literally one of the most blessed situations that has ever, you know, taken place in my life. So um, I, I followed that instruction. And then there was some additional instruction that I had to cut out all of the frivolous spending. So I didn't take vacations, right? I, I cut back on my vacations instead of, uh, you know, ripping and running up and down the, the highway to, you know, New York and DC and Baltimore. If you live in the Northeast, you know how close all of these cities are. And it's very easy to be like, oh, I'm just going to take a quick little trip, you know, a quick little getaway won't take me very long to get there. But that was costing me money doing this on a monthly basis. So I had to cut all of that out. Um, all of the brunches and lunches, cut all of that out. Um, uh, what are some other things? Oh, increase my income. So I had to take all of that time that I was using to rip and run up and down the highway. And that time now had to be dedicated and committed to focusing more on my business and growing my business to better serving the people who God has called me to serve instead of expending all of my time, money, and energy doing things that were distracting and taking away from the greater plan. Uh, and then again, I had to save more money. Money, right? So I had to cut out the frivolous spending, increase my income, save more money, pay off debts, increase my credit score. There were all of these instructions and things that I had to do before I was able to see the manifestation of the promise that God had for me. It's the same way in your business that a lot of times we want to see the success. We want to see the fruit of the labor without ever actually putting in the work, without ever actually making the sacrifice. So this morning, I don't want to talk to you about the things that are going to make you feel good. And I'm sorry if that's what you got on here for is something that was going to make you feel good because that's not what this morning's broadcast is going to be like. It is my hope that this morning's broadcast actually convicts you and that it causes you to think about how it is that you can mimic God and what it is that you do in your professional life. And I'm going to tell you what I mean. So we're going to go to our Bible. We are in um, Psalm 145. I don't know where I'm flipping to. I haven't flipped all the way to the New Testament. Psalm 145. Okay. And while you are flipping to that, just to give you a little bit um, of context and a little bit of history, a little teaching moment. So the book of Psalm uh, was written primarily by David, um, that he wrote 73 of the 150 Psalms, but there were seven, several different people rather who uh, wrote the other Psalms and that the Psalms, the book of Psalms shows how God's people are to talk to him and worship him, right? And, and the thing is, is that a lot of times we think that worship is only about, um, 
uh, you know, when we're in church and when we're in the four walls of some place of worship that we're, you know, crying out to him and holy, you're holy God, you're worthy God, you're magnificent God. Like, yes, that is a part of worship, but what about the worship that comes through obedience? How much more does that worship move God? See, the emotional side of it is what we tend to see in the four walls of the church or in the in the four walls of your place of worship, right? But what about your lifestyle of worship? What about a lifestyle that says that I'm going to be obedient, that I'm going to follow the instruction that God gave, that I am going to mimic him, that it is my desire to represent him, to be a uh, uh, an example of him, an ambassador of his, right? That that is my desire. So when we, when we look at the book of Psalms, we want to look at how God is speaking to his people, but also how uh, we are to talk to him and to worship him and to honor him in everything that it is that we do in our professional lives. So let's go to uh, Psalm 145 verse 17. And in the NIV ver version, it reads, the Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving toward all he has made. And we're going to keep going. So our, our focus scripture of today is Psalm 145 and 17. But you know, I like to get read a little bit before or a little bit after so that you get a true understanding of God's word and that you can understand the context of what's happening. So we're going to study this morning, uh, Psalm 145, 17 through 20. But remember that your focus scripture from the mornings with God book is verse 17. Thank you, Tony, for putting that in the comments on Instagram. So, the Lord is righteous in all his ways and loving toward all he has made. The Lord is near to all who call on him and to all who call on him in truth. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry and saves them. The Lord watches over all who love him, but all the wicked he will destroy. Okay, so I want to break this down verse by verse. And there's a, a four points that I want you all to take away from our time together this morning. Four things that I want you to remember from our time together this morning. And we're going to go through those again, breaking down. See, see, in this, right, we are reading God's promises toward us. But we need to dig deeper to find the instruction in this word. And the thing is, is that when you begin to study God's word and really understand what it is, you know that this is an instruction manual, that it becomes, again, an example for us to follow, that if we excuse me, desire to be more like Christ, that we desire to be Christ-like in our living and in our obedience and in how we follow God's instruction, that we have to look at what he does, right? So the thing is, is that we want the manifestation of this promise, but this morning, I'm going to challenge you to dig a little deeper and to open up your spiritual eye to see the instruction. And if you can't see it on your own, I'm going to help you to pull it out this morning. So the first thing, uh, comes from verse 17, where it says that the Lord is righteous in all his ways. That means that God is upstanding. Righteous is a simple way of saying upstanding, that you are an upstanding citizen, that you are an individual who seeks to do the right thing, that you are an individual who seeks to follow God's will, his instruction, and his plan, right? So we know that God is right, that everything that he does is upstanding. It's on the up and up. There's nothing shady about it. There's nothing underhand about it. There's nothing uh, secretive or conniving about the way that he moves. So then you have to ask yourself that if I know that he moves like that, what is the instruction that I am to pull from the way that he moves? So the instruction that we are to pull uh, from the way that he moves is that we are to be upstanding. You cannot expect God to bless your business, to bless you in your career, but you're constantly stabbing people in the back and sabotaging them that you know that you and your coworker are up for a promotion, but you decide to do something that is sneaky and underhanded and go behind that person's back to try to undercut their chance of getting the opportunity at the promotion. That is not of God. Or let's say that 
you know, you um uh apply to be a speaker for an event and for, you know, some way somehow you find out that uh one of your competitors has applied as well and what you decide to do is something that is sneaky or underhanded and you decide to, you know, contact the event coordinator and tell the event coordinator all of the bad things that someone else has done or, you know, uh or or oh, this is a good one. Thank you Holy Spirit. That um you are working on producing content instead of producing your own content you decide to swipe someone else's and this is something that I see a lot of something that is truly happening a lot in today's age and I think it's because social media makes things so accessible um, and people don't mind um, you know swiping somebody's content and presenting it as their own or even I recently saw a situation where somebody took somebody they purchased the person's program took it repackaged it and tried to sell it for more money how are you taking somebody else's content that you got on sale, repackaging it, and actually not even attempting to repackage it, but taking someone else's content, purchasing it, and then reselling it at a higher price? No. This is not the corner store. This is not how we're operating. Okay? We are operating at a level of integrity that is godly. That is Christ-like. So when we ask ourselves, when we look at this word and we want to know what instruction to pull from it, the first instruction uh, is that we want to do business according to his word. You have to do business in, uh, according to the way that he would have you to do business, which is only going to be with integrity, upright, and in good standing. Okay, the next point that I want you are, the next instruction that I want you to pull out is faithfulness. To remain faithful. One of the things that uh, God had me to do, and it was so funny, right? Um, and it's interesting. I actually haven't even shared this with my pastor, but um, when I was kind of like right at the top of my pre-approval process in uh, for, for home ownership, one of the things that God had me to do was to increase my tithing by like double. I was like, wait a minute, God, What? You know I'm trying to save money. You know I'm trying to buy this house. You know that because I'm self-employed that these banks and these lenders are going to take me through the ringer. That they're going to scrutinize everything. That they're going to require more of me than they would require of someone, you know, who has a, a, a nine to five or someone who has to them a steady income or a steady paycheck. But what we should all know and what we should be learning from what's going on in our country right now is that there there is nothing that is steady. There is nothing that is stable. There is nothing that is secure. In fact, I have found more security in being self-employed than I ever had in working for someone else. That's all I'm saying, okay? So the thing is, is that God instructed me to begin to tithe more. And then there would even be these instances where I would see, um, you know, for example, maybe I would be on Facebook and, you know, someone just purchased a home and they're excited about it and they're shouting it out and God would be like, ask for their cash app name. Huh? How, how you got me cash apping somebody else and for their blessing of a household when I need to be saving every dime that I have? I need to be holding on to every dime that I have because these people, again, they are going to scrutinize every single dime that I spend. But you're instructing me to give more, to give, to give, to give. And the thing that I began to see is, oh, okay, God, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing. That you're really, really putting this principle of give in order to receive into action in my life. And in fact, you're not only asking me to give in order to receive, but you're requiring me to give more in order to receive more than what it is that I'm even expecting, at, at, you know, uh, at the basic level, at the, at the ground level of this thing, okay? So what God is instructing you to do in order to see the full manifestation of the promise that he has for you is that you must remain faithful. Let me tell you something. If you are a Christian leader or a Christian business owner and you are not tithing, you need to start tithing. You have to. This is when I talk about success and anybody wants to know what my real secret to success is, I promise you that it's tithing. 
When I tithe, I mean, I expect increase, but I give it cheerfully and, and willingly with no apprehension because I just know that God's going to take care of me. Right. I understand this principle of giving in order to receive and that I cannot outgive God. But you need to remain faithful in everything. This means that you need to remain faithful in your consistency. You need to remain faithful in your diligence. You need to remain faithful in showing up. You need to remain faithful in producing. You need to remain faithful in your focus. You need to remain faithful in every area of life, in your ambition and in your drive and in your, your motivation and in your networking and in your producing and in your creativity and in you're praying and you have to remain faithful. The thing is, is that we oftentimes want the promises of a faithful God when we've not been faithful ourselves. That if you truly desire the manifestation, the full manifestation of the promises that God has for you, you have to know that faithfulness is one of the requirements, that it is an instruction before the promise and after the promise. You can't get the promise and then all of a sudden decide that you're going to stop being faithful. See, the thing is, is that God didn't tell me to tithe more until I got the house. God told me to tithe more until otherwise notified. I was like, okay, this is cool. But he's done that before. And guess what? The last time that he did it, it was the most profitable year that I had in my business. Okay, so the thing is, is that we are not just tithing and remaining faithful for material things and for finances, but also because there is a peace that comes with knowing that you have followed God's instruction and that you are doing what he has instructed you to do. You know, when you are obedient, this is the thing. It's just like your, your natural parent, right? That when you are obedient to God's word, when you have followed his instruction, when you are doing what he has told you to do, it's just certain things that you don't worry about. Certain things that you don't fret about, that you're not concerned about, you're not afraid of, you're not scared, that there is no real concern in that particular area because you know that you've done what you're supposed to do. That if your parents walk into the house and they, you know, come in and, and there's chores undone, but you know that you did your chores, what are you worried about? It's your siblings that are going to get in trouble, not you. You did your part. You did your job. You did what you were supposed to do. Okay? So we want to make sure that we are remaining faithful in everything that we do. Remain faithful in your commitment to the business, to the idea, to your career, to showing up one time. Remain faithful to showing up every week. Just remain faithful in what it is that God has called you to do and watch the manifestation of his promise of success for you. The next thing that I want to pull out is going to come from uh, verse 18, the B call. So the portion that comes after the comma. And it reads, to all who call on him in truth. And what that is simply saying is that God is looking for the individuals who are real. The people who are genuine, that you're not just calling on him and pulling on him for material things or for the things that are going to benefit you, but you are calling on him and pulling on him because you just want more of him. You want more of what he has promised you. You want more of his presence. You want a greater interaction with him. You want to experience more of him. You want to go deeper in his word. You want to go higher in his plan for you. You want to go further in the journey that he has etched out for you, that he has carved out for you, the specific path that he has for you. Okay. So he, God knows our hearts. Let me tell you something. As we kick off 2019, we are still in the first month of the year. This is a year where a lot of people, you know, tend to want to, you know, start that business, write that book, produce the CD, write the song, whatever it is, get the promotion, whatever it is that you desire, right? That we tend to see a lot of that at the beginning of the year. If your sole purpose in striving for the next level of success is to simply just make money, you're going into it for the wrong reason. You're going into it for the wrong reason and you're going about it in the wrong way. And that's just the set that that that's what it is. That you're going into it for the wrong reason and that you're going about it in the wrong way. 
in a way that is not going to yield what you want. Because let me tell you something, especially being self-employed, every day is not going to be a peachy keen day. Every day is not going to be overflowing with abundance and it's just not going to be, you know, the perfect little day every single day. That's not what's going to happen. That there, in fact, are going to be some days that are going to be rough. There are some days, there are going to be some days that are going to be hard. There are going to be some days that are going to be some challenges. There's going to be some days where you make more money today than maybe you did the day before. Right? That it's not always going to be this easy, peachy, keen road that is just, you know, covered with roses and sunshine. So when you get into this, when you really begin to follow God's purpose and plan for your life, you have to be genuine. The same way that God is real with you and he's honest with you and he's transparent with you and he's revealing to you, you have to have that same level of genuineness. Because God can see through all of that, all of that perpetrating for social media, all of that, you know, saying that you're for the people, but you're really not all of that. He can see through that. And God is looking for a genuine people. This is going to be a season where we see the underdogs rising to the top simply because they were genuine, because they were faithful, because they desired to follow the instruction that God gave in a real and true way. And I see you guys sending up the hearts and the like and the love, which tells me that you are in agreement with what is being said. That you know that it is true, that this is the season for the individual who's been counted out, the one who has been overlooked, because the person who has been operating with integrity, obedience, faithfulness, and genuineness, that's the person who's going to win. That's the person who's going to be elevated to the next level every single time. So if you've been a person who's been faithful, you've been genuine, you've been consistent, you've been obedient, you've been operating with integrity, but you feel like everybody else has just been passing you by. What I need you to know today is that that is no longer going to be your portion. And at the end of this broadcast, I'm going to pray for that with you in agreement. The, the, the things that you have seen happen for other people will no longer pass you by because of your obedience, because you followed the instruction attached to the promise. Amen, somebody. Amen. Amen. All right. And then last but not least, and there's so many different levels of instructions. One of the things that I definitely want to encourage you to do is to seek God for the instruction that he is trying to give to you. The instruction that he gives to me may be different than the instruction that he gives to you. But these principles that we are talking about this morning, these are basic principles, basics and basic instruction that he gives to everyone. The same general instruction that we all have to operate with integrity. We all have to be obedient. We all have to be faithful. We all have to be genuine. But the way that he calls you to be faithful may be different. The instruction, the specific instruction may be a little bit different. I told you that my specific instruction is that God called me, called me to increase my tithe double, to double the amount that I was tithing. He may not tell you to do that and that's okay because guess what? Your 10% tithe is all that he requires of you. But there may be another area of faithfulness that he is calling you higher where maybe he didn't call me higher. So you have to follow these general instructions for the manifestation of the promise, but you also have to seek God for these specific instructions that he's giving you for your promise. He may say, you know what, you're going to be a six figure owner in 2019 and your partner is going to be a six figure owner in 2019 as well. But you might the process to get there is going to be different. This is why it's important to seek him for the specific instruction that he has for you in your process, in your journey. So the last general instruction, and again, this the four that we covered today are not the only general instructions that are out there. They're not the only general instructions in God's word. But this last one that we're going to cover is respect. Respect. That you have to respect him. And that comes from uh, verse 19, the A clause. So the, the, the portion before the semicolon. 
It says, he fulfills the desires of those who fear him. He fulfills the desires of those who fear him. You do not in 2019 have to strain and strive as hard as you did in any other year if you simply honor and respect God. And that's what fear means. A lot of times people read that and we think about fear, the demonic fear, the fear that cripples us and stifles us and holds us back. But that is not the kind of fear that God is taught. This is a holy fear, a holy reverence of him that says, you know what? The same way that I honor my natural mother and father, that if my mother calls me and asks me to come over and shovel the snow on her sidewalk, I'm going to do it because I care about my mother. I honor my mother. I respect my mother. I don't want her slipping and sliding down the steps. So I'm going to show up and shovel up whether I feel like it. I might have to shovel my own snow. I may have to travel across the city in traffic and messy weather to do it for. But no matter what I have to go through because I love my mother, I'm going to do what she asked me to do. That is the same type of respect and fear that we are talking about in God's word. It is a holy reverence that because I love him so much, I'm going to do what he tells me to do. I'm going to do whatever it is that he asks of me. Then my immediate answer is going to be, yes, I'm not going to drag my feet. I don't care how messy it gets. I don't care how inconvenient it may seem that whatever God instructs me to do in my professional life, I am going to do it. Because I understand that holy fear of him and respecting him and honoring him is a part of the instruction manual for the manifestation of the promise. You cannot expect the manifestation of God's promises when all you have done is disrespect him by being disobedient. Disrespect him by not following his word or his commands. That you've done nothing but be disrespectful, but you want him to honor you and to grant you the desires of your heart. That's not how that works. That's not how that works at all. Okay, so respect him. And it says that God fulfills the desires. See, the thing is, is that we get so caught up in all of the things that we need to do in order to fulfill the desires that we have. That, oh, if I do this or, oh, if I do that, if I say this, if I say that, if I go to this place, if I partner with that person, like whatever the case may be, that if I do something, that if I do enough of X, Y, and Z, that I will see the manifestation of the promise. But God is saying not so. If you simply do what I told you to do, I'm going to fill in all the gaps. If you simply do what God instructs you to do, he's going to fill in the gaps. He's going to fulfill the desires. And if I learned anything from the home buying process, God is going to fulfill the desires at a level that is greater than anything that you could think of, imagine, or pray for. There were literally things that I thought about that I never even asked God for. I didn't even pray about them. I was just like, oh, that would be cool. And my idea, again, so so let me be transparent. My plan was, oh, I'll just build it. If it's not in the house, I'll just build it. If it doesn't look this way, I'll just make it look the way that I want to make it look. But God is saying, not so. If you just do what I told you to do, I'm going to give you the desires and you won't have to work so hard. We're too busy Think, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. We are too busy trying to think of everything that we could possibly do to push God Instead of being obedient because he wants to give it. You don't have to push him and try to trick him and manipulate God into doing what you want. Simply follow the instruction and be obedient and watch him grant you the desires of your heart. And that goes back to genuineness. God knows if you're trying to manipulate him. If you're just saying one thing, but what's in your heart is different. Oh God, I'm going to be, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to do it. I'm going to follow the instruction. I'm going to do what you, whatever you tell me to do, God, I'm going to do. However you tell me to do it, I'm going to do it. Whatever sacrifice I'm going to make. And God is looking at you, no, you ain't going to make no sacrifices. You ain't really ready to do anything that I tell you. You might do some of the things that I tell you to do, but you're not really ready to do anything that I tell you to do. God can see right through all of that talk. To what's real. And what's real is what is hidden in your heart. Amen, somebody. I got my amen corner on Instagram. Got my amen corner on Facebook, okay? He can see straight 
through that. So just to recap really quickly, um, and you guys can go ahead if you have any questions, if you have any comments, I'm done. I'm going to recap really quickly these four instructions. And these are just four instructions that we pulled from these few verses. We only covered, what, three verses. Psalm 145, 17 through 20. We covered four, three verses, four verses, I'm sorry, four verses, and we were able to pull out four instructions. Imagine if we had covered 10 or 20, how many more instructions would we have from God's word? Okay, so to recap really quickly, that when we read God's word, we need to be digging deeper. In 2019, I want y'all to dig deeper. No more of this surface level stuff. No more of this surface level relationship. Yes, Mornings with God is a great book because it helps you to jumpstart your morning, but it's just a jumpstart. I want you, if the verse is verse 17, I want you on your own to read a few verses before and a few verses after. You don't have to wait until we get on the broadcast every Tuesday to study a little bit more. This is simply a tool to help you jumpstart. So if it says to read verse 17, you should be reading 16 and 18 as well. Read the verse before and the verse after. And then as you grow, you'll start to read 15 through 19. And then the next thing you know, you'll be reading the whole chapter. Okay? So to recap really quickly, our topic for today that we covered is um, the instruction before the promise. Some of the instructions that we talked about this morning is that we want to operate with integrity, which means that we should be doing a bus doing business according to God's word. That we should be upstanding in all that we do in our professional lives. Okay? The next one was to remain faithful. You cannot pick and choose when you want to do what God tells you to do. That's not how it works. The third thing was to be genuine. Be real. Be honest. There were some things that I had to surrender in the home buying process that I had said that I was going to surrender before, but I didn't truly surrender them until the end of last year. That was genuine. And listen, let me tell you something. God knew when I said it the first time that it wasn't true. He was like, you ain't ready, baby. I still love you, but you're not really ready. You're not really ready to surrender that thing. You're saying that you are, but I see your heart and I see your actions. It doesn't make me love you any less. I just know that you're not yet ready. And then when it, when it came back around and I said, no, for real this time, he knew that I was real. He knew that it was genuine. I knew that I was genuine. <laughs> I knew that it was real. Right? So be genuine. And then last but not least, respect him. Honor him as if he was the, your, your, your natural father or your natural mother or the person who raised you standing right in front of you. Or your mentor or your pastor, some, some physical person that you respect standing right in front of you. The same way that you wouldn't disrespect them to their faces, don't disrespect God. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and pray us out. If you have any questions or comments about what we talked about this morning or what we studied, please put them in the comment box now. And I'm going to answer them after we pray out. Lord, we just want to say thank you. God, we thank you for bringing us together once again. We thank you for another broadcast together. We thank you for more time together. God, we thank you for the power of technology this morning that allows us to come together on one accord and to do what it is that you have called us to do. God, we thank you for your instruction. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your love. We thank you, God, for your overwhelming care and consistency. We thank you, God, for your truth, God, and we Thank you for simply being who you are. God, we thank you for your word and the instruction that has come from it. God, I pray that your people would truly take this word and hide it in their heart so that they won't sin against it. That when life begins to happen, that they won't forget that they must operate with integrity. That when someone stabs them in the back, that they remember that they can't meet that person in that negativity. God, that they operate out of a holy reverence of you and not some demonic fear of what may or may not happen. God, I rebuke the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus and call forth the spirit of reverence. And I pray that it reside in every person who is watching this, God. God, I pray that your children would be more faithful. If there's someone who is watching this broadcast who is not a tithe, 
either. God, I pray that you would get on their nerves, that you would just pick, 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 that you would remind them, remind them, remind them, that you would convict them so deeply until they begin to give at the level that you have called them to give. And God, I pray that you would reward them for their obedience, whether it be financial or in peace, more joy, more assurance, more security, more comfort, Father God, that you would reward them for their obedience, that they would understand the biblical principle of tithing, that it is not paying you in order to receive something, but it is opening them up in order to receive what it is that you have for them. So, Lord, we just say thank you this morning. We thank you for being a God who cares enough about us to wait for us. That even when our, our, when the when everything doesn't line up with when what we speak with our mouths may not actually be fully embedded in our hearts, that you still wait for us. That you give us opportunity and time after time to get it right. That you love us so much and care about us so much that you want the best for us. And that you're willing to wait for us to give it to us. Because you don't want to give us something something that we're not ready for and we mishandle it and then we lose it and then you have to deal with healing the disappointment and the sadness of it. So God, we just thank you this morning and we honor you this morning for being such a loving and gracious and kind and compassionate and caring God. And God, I pray that your children would seek you for the next level of instruction. God, I believe you by faith this morning that whatever it is that their heart desires, as long as it is in alignment with your perfect will for them, Father God, that it is already theirs and that they just simply have to walk out the journey to receive it. God, I pray that no longer shall your children be overlooked or bypassed by the things that are for them. That the, 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 excuse me, the car that they desire, that it's theirs. The job that they desire, it's theirs. The house that they desire, it's theirs. The financial increase is theirs. The business is theirs. The CD, the, the book, God, whatever it is that you have called them to do, the marriage, children, whatever desire they have in their hearts that it is their portion and that no longer will it pass them by God I rebuke the spirit of lack God I bind that up in the name of Jesus that no longer show your children lack what they does oh God they will no longer lack what they desire they will no longer lack what they desire and God I pray that you would pull and push your children into alignment. Do whatever you, oh God, I thank you. Do whatever you have to do to get your children into alignment with the plan that you have for them. And God, we just say thank you this morning. We honor you this morning, God, and we give your name all of the glory. I pray that this week will be more blessed than every other week that has come before it. That this day shall contain more blessings. God, ah, God that you would just leave your children in awe of you. That it would blow their minds. That it would leave them stuck in amazement. Not know, like, how did he do this? How did he do it so abundantly? That those are the type of blessings and miracles that you would pour out to your children. That it would leave them dumbfounded and awestruck. And God, I pray that you would do it day after day after day. And reward them richly for their obedience on this side of heaven. God, I pray these in all things in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right. So let's look at some questions. Let's do some shout outs. Good morning. every. Oh, we got a lot of people on Facebook. Oh, Lord. A lot of people on Facebook. All right. Let me do my Instagram people first. Um, all right. So let's see. If you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment box now. Oh, good morning to Erica, Krishina. Thank you for joining. Britt, thank you for joining. Um, Royce, Ashley, uh, Candy Girl, Iman, Charles, uh, Lana Fair Salon, Samira, Rodney. Hey, Elder, how are you? Amen. Well, glory to God. One of our uh, sisters on Instagram said that the prayer had her in tears. Glory to God. And I pray that this is something that you all really, that you hide it in your heart, right? That you hide this truth. I pray, thank you, Holy Spirit, that you all would remember God. Mm. 
Remember God's eternal truth and reality. His eternal truth and reality. It's so easy when we're going through the process and going from level to level. It's so easy for us to get caught up in what we see in front of us. That we get caught up on what we see in our natural eye. That we, we forget about God's eternal truth and reality. That is never going to change. It will always remain the same. What God said is going to, it's not going to change. He's not going to all of a sudden change his mind. He's not going to forget about you or the promises that he made to you. That's how much he loves you. And yes, sometimes, listen, I told y'all last week. I'll call God to the bed. Like, look, ooh, over here. Hey, Jesus. Um, Remember when you said that you was going to do X, Y, and Z? This don't look like that. I, I know you're working, but I'm just saying it don't look like it. So one of two things. I need you to either change my perspective or change the situation. Some, something got to give. Something has to break, right? So, and, and this is the way that I talk to God. I don't know how y'all talk to him. This is the way I talk to him. Because we have to have those reminders. And the thing is, this is genuine. This is real. I don't doubt God's power all of a sudden. All I'm saying is, Lord, I'm human. I'm having a human moment. I'm coming to you in my humanness. And I'm letting you know that I ain't seeing it the way that you see it. So please help me. Help me to see it that way. And I really pray. I feel this so strongly. I don't know who that's for. Keep your eyes on God's eternal truth and reality. Eternal. It is forever forevermore, which means that it's forever and ever and ever and ever and as many and evers as you want to put on it. It's never going to change. Okay. So good morning to everybody um, who joined us on Facebook. Um, Erica, Leah, Tina. Good morning to my father. Good morning, Irene. Good morning, Doug. Thank you um, to my brother joining uh, Rachel, good morning. Thank you to Michelle and Yvonne and Aisha. Thank you to Aisha for always joining us. Always here with us every Tuesday morning. Ramik. Oh, my stepdad is here too. Yay. Good morning. Uh, good morning to Kelly and John. Yeah, thank you for watching this morning. If you all have any questions, um, remember, if you, if you join late, the book that we um come that that we do our devotional from every Tuesday is called Mornings with God. Um, you can order this on my website tiffanygillespie.com. Simply click on the store, um, and you can um get this book. I am doing a mailing today, so if you order this morning, it will be sent to you today, which means you'll have it really quickly. Okay, um, so you can get this on the website. Um, good morning to Ayana, my Asia. Good morning to Don. Thank you for joining. Um, Kay, thank you. My girlfriend Kay joined on Facebook and on Instagram. I love when people do that. That means that they share on Facebook and Instagram. I really do appreciate that. Good morning to my sister Jessica, Tori, Jamila. Thank you for joining us. <clears throat> Andrew to, um, I believe it's Tahani or Tani. I need to get the pronunciation of your name. But thank you, sis, for joining this morning. Good morning to um, Stephanie and to Michael for joining us. Lori L, Tatiana, everybody. Any questions or comments? And, okay, so we have one comment here. Um, somebody said, I just ordered the book. Amen. So your book is going to be mailed to you today. I'm going to the post office this afternoon. Uh, I just ordered it. God told me to be consistent this year in all things, especially in seeking him every day. Let me tell you. So one of my girlfriends, she's actually on here. Um, hopefully she's still on here. But God also uh, has been convicted her about consistency as well. So I love that you were honest about that. And the thing is, is for me. So um, I moved last weekend, I think. Yeah. Yeah, last weekend I moved. The past two weeks have literally been like a whirlwind since Christmas. It's been a whirlwind. And literally I woke up this morning and said, God, I need my consistency back. I am so much happier when I am obedient to the instruction of consistency. When there is order and like structure to my day, I am so much happier and find so much more joy in being obedient to God and knowing, you know what? Today I did what God 
God called me to do. Today, I know I walked in purpose. I rocked that thing today. That makes me feel so much better about what God has called me to do. So I pray for consistency for our sister Jamila. Thank you for being honest. Our sister My Asia, I pray for consistency for myself and that you all would remain consistent in what it is that God has called you to do. Um, good morning to Keith. Thank you for joining us. Um, good morning, everybody. Good morning, Rashawn. Amen. I agree that the world needs to hear this. I'm sure it'll be to the masses sooner than later. Good morning to my Aunt Doreen, my cousin Brian. All my family's on here. Good morning. Good morning, CJ. Thank you. Irene is like the biggest proponent of this book. I need to have Irene be like the um, the Mornings with God ambassador because she is always raving about that book um, and how wonderful it is and how much it's blessed her life. So we don't have any questions or comments. Um, thank you all uh, for joining uh, this morning. Good morning, Dan. Um, thank you all so much for joining. Um, and you can catch the replay. Please share this replay with someone who you know needs it. Um, and I will be live this week with some teaching. I'm back to our business classes uh, that I do free on Instagram. I'm going to publish the schedule today. Um, the schedule will be out so you'll see um, when I'll be live over the next seven days and what we'll be talking about and teaching on. Um, I do have a new business mentoring and coaching program that is out um, and you all can join that. So there's so many things that are going to be happening. I am fully back to work, fully excited about it. I'm grateful for the move, but fully excited about um, being back to work. So I love you all to life. I will see you all later on this week. And if you can't join us for our free business classes, then you can join us next Tuesday morning at 8 a.m. for our next Morning with God series. I love you all to life and I will see you soon. Bye.